Thank you for coming by and watching this video. If you enjoy this video or feel you've benefited from it, consider going to patreon.com forward slash newbiehack and support these efforts. You'll have access to 20 of my latest videos that hasn't been published on YouTube yet. To review, we have our include, which includes all of the chip-specific registers. We have a defined, we have a set of defined statements here that show how we have it connected on the circuit. Where we have our LCD D0 pin connected, connected to pin 12 on port B. Same thing with D1 through D7. We have a function that tests a single bit in a byte and sends it to the pin. And in our main, we have our port specific input output, setting the port B and C to output for the specific pins that we're using for the LCD. We have our reset clock and control register, which enables the, the B and C ports. And then we have where we're sending each of the eight bits of the byte to each pin that has been specified in the defines using the character specified here. Generally, when we're sending characters or commands to the LCD, we do that in one line. We also send an entire string of text in one line as well, but we'll start with just sending character by character as one-liners. So we'll create a function that sends the entire character to all the pins of the LCD. This should be very straightforward because all we're doing is we're taking characters, the character, the single character, and we're just applying it in all of these lines to get each bit of the character to the pins. So let's start with creating a function. And this is not going to, res this function is not gonna return anything. So we're just gonna use void. I don't think it's gonna return anything at this point. So we're just gonna send, we're just gonna say send a character to the LCD data pins. And then all we're going to be putting in is the character. And over here, we're using a car. So we'll use that as a data type. <clears throat> and we'll call it character. Now, all we need to do is actually take all of these and just move them into that location. So we have the character and it's being pushed into this, these lines. And to invoke that, we're just going to copy this line. And instead of putting the character here, we could just do this, but that would be a waste of, of an entire line of code. So we're just gonna put in the actual character in that line and remove this line that creates a, a variable and then stores the A into that variable. So now you can start to see how easy it is to actually just take characters and then send them to the LCD. Later on, we'll take all of this stuff, which is stuff would be that would be related to the LCD specifically. And also this, we'll pro probably put this all in a header file. And all you would see in this program or in this code would be something like this, send the character. Or later on, we'll, we'll create a send the string or send text to the LCD or send command to the LCD. The next change I'd like to implement is to make this a little bit more automated because we already have all of these defines and we're specifying all of the pins for the ports. I would like to make it so this takes advantage of that as well. So we don't have to manually put the ones and the zeros in these port registers to set up the port. I'd like to do that automatically. So let's see how we can do that. The only challenge we may face in automating this is that these are 32-bit numbers and we're really working only with 16 pins as specified in the defined statements because you can see that ports don't really have 32 pins. They just have 16 pins and they use registers that use 32 bits because sometimes you need two bits for each pin. This really isn't a challenge because when you're doing shifting with bits, bitwise operation shifting, 
you can just multiply the shifting by two. I'm going to set this up in a very similar fashion as I've set this up. I'm gonna do them one by one because I wanna take advantage of these defines one by one. And I may have three, even four ports being used with pins all over the place. And I don't want anything to stop me from being restricted by only say two ports or something like that. So I wanna go ahead and do this correctly and make it so we can use any port that we want. So I could come over here and make this port D or, or port E or F or whatever, and it'll still work as long as the pin is compatible to what we're doing on the circuit. I want to start by creating a function. This is gonna be a non-returned function. And I'm gonna call it set port and pin for output. And then what we want to put in, bring in is our port and our pin. Let's see how we want to do that. I'm going to steal some stuff I had here, which is going to be the same thing because we're using the same defines. Since we're using, or since we're really focusing on a single pin in this function, we only care about the port and the pin number. Since we're going to be going, we're going to be setting each pin one by one. You can already see from the first video of this LCD series that I told you to do it this way. This is one alternative way to shorten the, the way we're doing it as the longhand way where we're setting the mode individually, the type and speed and pull up, pull down register. We're doing that individually for each pin. We're gonna go back to that, but still it's gonna be a much easier and clean code because we're gonna be doing something very similar to this, but we are also making it so it's reusable because it's using the defines and we can change only this if we need to change our circuit. So instead of using, let's say nine, we need to use 10 on the GPIO for C or we need to use another port. We can just make that change and the entire program should work flawlessly. So let's take a look at these one by one. We're gonna look at the mode. So let's go ahead and just, we can just type in port and we're gonna to go to the mode register. We can see down here, we want a zero and a one in the mode register. And this would be position 31 and position 30, because this starts with position zero. So how do we get to that position when we're talking about pin number, say 15? Here you have all of the positions for a 32-bit number. And the row on the bottom represents the positions associated with the pin number. Since the mode register requires two bits per pin. So for instance, if we're working with pin number 15 and we have to put a zero in this position and a one in this position, we need to figure out how to use the left shift operator to make this happen. In this case, we're gonna to have to do a left shift the one, actually it's it's an and equaling a not, one left shift and the 31 position. And in this particular case, we need a one in that position. So this was gonna be an or equals a one left shift and the 30th position. Here we have the 31 position for the zero and the 30th position for the oring, putting a one inside that position. So for the case of the zero in the 31st position, remember there may be a one here because of some other task that we had to perform in another part of the program. So we wanna make sure that there's a zero in this position. And the way we do that is we use the and not one left shift 31 and the 15 is what we're given. So what times 15 plus what would equal 31? That would be times two plus one. So we're multiplying 15 times two, which gives us 30 and we're adding one to give us 31. The 30th position when we're given the number 15 is actually easier. It's just 15 times two. 15 times two is equal to 30. So that one is pretty straightforward. Let's say we had, we were given pin number 10. 10 times two is equal to 20. That would be the one plate, that would be putting a one in this position. 
and then 10 times 2 plus 1 would be the the other position which is the same as as this example so we just have to plug in the number the pin number and then use this multiplier and plus 1 for the first or for actually for the second position and then for the first position you just multiply it by 2 and it works with every case.